Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Khan, also known as Jedi Jester, and today we got a brand new FIFA 23 video on our channel, The Guide. There has been some changes with new game, so today we are going to talk about the transition from FIFA 22 to FIFA 23 in the defense and how to adapt to it in order to concede less goals. Let's get going. Tackling is one of your strongest elements when it comes to defending in FIFA 23. Decisive tackling is now very rewarding compared to the latest games and you can encourage yourself more to go for braver tackles. It can help you avoid danger even before it gets started. Standing tackles could be used like this once your player is in a good spot to get himself towards the dribbler. The distance, the direction and the timing of the tackle is very important here. If you tackle too far away, you will never reach the ball. So make sure to reduce the distance first between your player and the attacker. The direction of the tackle also matters as you should always tackle towards the ball instead of the player himself. Timing is also a key element. It is best to tackle the ball right after the opponent gets a touch on it and pushes it a bit away from his feet. Sliding tackles are also very useful in FIFA 23 and are more rewarding, but they also bear a high risk. It is best to use them when you have to quickly cover a larger distance. Sometimes a simple standing tackle won't be able to get you the ball because you might be too far away, but a sliding tackle could potentially help with it. It might also become useful when the opponent thinks that he has open space and pushes the ball too far away from his feet. With a quick player switch towards your defender, you can create a surprising sliding tackle situation in which you get the ball back or at least avoid the danger. However, like we mentioned, there's a higher risk and if you can't get your slide tackle in successfully, that could also work out for your opponent as they will get past you easily. So make sure you use them carefully. Even if you can't find the right spot to get an active tackle in, you have another tool which is jockeying. By pressing the L2 or LT button, you activate the jockey defending and put your player into a defensive stance and combine with your left analog stick movement, this allows you to quickly mirror the opponents until you find the right position to go for an active defensive move. Even without using the tackling button actively, using the jockey and getting your defender towards the dribbler will allow you to challenge the ball and with the correct jockey movement, you will mostly win the ball. You can also use the jockey with your sprinting button to be able to catch players who are running without losing your defensive stance. Shortly said, jockeying is still very useful. Useful techniques and detailed tricks about them could be found in our application The Guide Plus, which you can download for free if you're looking forward to improve yourself in FIFA. In The Guide Plus, you can find in-depth tutorials, structured courses, and track your progress on the topics you most struggle with. Our interactive quizzes will also keep you up to date anytime. If you're interested, make sure to download The Guide Plus and see what the next level learning experience offers by yourself. We should also be talking about positioning your players in defense. Having a good shape and not letting out your defenders is more important this year as a little tiny mistake could open up a huge space for the opposition. So it is essential to find the perfect spot to position your players and cover multiple spaces. Due to changes in FIFA 23, the dribbling is more challenging in the earlier stages of the game and players tend to use passes more often. That is why anticipating early on as a defender became strong in the new game, which means interceptions work better by far compared to FIFA 22. If you see a potential passing lane, you can switch to one of your defenders near to the potential target and get him slightly towards the passing lane so that you could cover multiple passing opportunities before it happens. The quality of the interception relies heavily on the positioning. If you position yourself really well, you don't just intercept the ball, but you will also control it. But on the other hand, if you just made it to the passing lane, you will barely control the ball and have some problems retaining possession. Even though early anticipation is more rewarding, over anticipation is still your enemy, so be watchful. It is also important to position your players correctly once the opponent finds open spaces. Especially when you're getting outnumbered, controlling the whole area without going too aggressive towards the ball dribbler will save you on multiple occasions. If an attacker has an open space in front of him, try to move one of your defenders towards that area without getting him too far away from his original spot. Since the attacking AI in FIFA 23 is smarter than the previous one, pushing defenders away from their position is punished more often. So, this could open up another gap for the attacker and they could pretty much use it against you. 
You could also use the second man pressure to be able to get one of your defenders towards a dribbler in the open space while covering the pass opportunity towards a potential receiver. So it would be smart to defend with caution in situations like this in FIFA 23. Last but not least, we should also mention the auto blocks. In the latest titles, auto blocks were really strong and all you needed to do was to position your player between the ball and the goal. That would automatically deflect any shot with no question. However, auto blocks are nerfed in FIFA 23. Just standing on the line towards the goal isn't going to help you too much. You should be either getting your defender towards the attacker while jockeying or actively tackle on the ball while the attacker goes for the shot. Partial Team Press is a new defensive mechanic in FIFA 23. By pressing the R1 or RB button twice and holding on to it after pressing the second time will activate the Partial Team Press. This method will force two of your defenders to get close and mark two of the potential passing stations and your selected defender could be much more effective on one versus one defending. Even though the Partial Team Press and the Second Man Pressure have similar inputs, they have the exact opposite logic. With the second man pressure, your goal is to send an AI player towards a dribbler and put some pressure on him while you try to defend the potential receiver or the target area manually. But on the other hand, partial team press allows your AI players to cover passing lanes and your goal is to pressure the dribbler manually. Knowing the difference between those two mechanics will allow you to use them in different situations. This new mechanic could be very useful once you want to apply some shock pressure up front after losing possession. By activating it in a tight situation, you reduce the passing opportunities of your opponent and this could lead to a huge mistake. Here, as the passes are being covered, manually defending the last opportunity of your opponent can easily win you the ball and you can become really dangerous with a counter-attack. So, it is important to observe which opportunities the AI players cover and manually defend the other option which is not being covered. You could also use the partial team press close to your box to instantly apply pressure from multiple angles. This could open up new opportunities for your opponent, but if he doesn't react fast enough, you will force him into a possession loss. We will be also publishing an in-depth tutorial about partial team press on the guide plus, which will handle the topic much more detailed. Goalkeepers seem to be really bad in these early stages of the game. They are not reliable and moving them with your right analog stick is sometimes not enough even if you think you did the right thing. However, there is one thing you can do. Getting them out early, especially in one versus one situations, could be quite helpful. While they close off the shooting angle of the attacker, they are also harder to get past in this year's game. There is still the risk of getting chipped when you bring out the keeper, however, I still think that is a risk you have to take in most of the situations, otherwise you could get really angry with your keeper if he's your last hope. So that's it for today's video. Before wrapping it up, we would like to ask you if you have already noticed the difference in defense before watching this video. Let us know what you think about it in the comment section below. We hope this video has informed you well. If so, feel free to drop a like and make sure you don't miss any content related to FIFA 23 by subscribing to our channel and turning on the notifications. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I did. Until next one, take care and peace.